Hey guys, this is Man Shark Sub LPs. I'm Sub, this is Europa Universalis 4, and this is Millennia in the Making, episode 221. We're playing as France. I know, it's just a bizarre thing that's happened. Uh, anyway, this is the train map mode. We're going to go over a few of these um, before we actually get down to playing because there's a lot more detail here than there was in CK2, at least at the end of things. So, let's get into it. Let's start with the map mode. So we've got the terrain map mode here. This changes. So as the seasons pass, currently we're in summer in the northern northern hemisphere so a lot of the frost has you know gone back and all that sort of stuff in winter you'll see all of this sort of come f actually i am completely wrong aren't i oh there's my southern hemisphere talking though again this is winter or you know bordering on winter so you can see the snow has come down being all snowy and you can also see that we don't actually have view on the entire map, and that's just because we haven't discovered it all. We do have some discoveries that have appeared here, so uh, the discoveries of Obdorsk, Trajan, then goes on a bit. All of those have spread to us. Uh, we must find a way to exploit this knowledge, sure. That's basically all of these places down here. We're not going to be seeing the terrain map mode a lot, except, actually, we're going to see it more than we did in Crusader Kings. Because one thing which is important is each province doesn't just have, like, oh, this is a hills province or something like that. You can see this list here. Nida Bayan, 41.3% plains, 37.2% woods, 12.5% hills, 6% mountains, and 2.8% forest. Those are the chances that if you fight... Also, there's like a wagon moving. Uh, those are the chances that if you have a fight or a battle in this land, that you'll end up in that particular terrain type. Some places are 100% mountains, obviously, but yeah, so there's no longer the guarantee that you're going to get favourable attacking terrain. Unless you attack somewhere like, uh... Well, the desert. Let's just go with that. Okay, so, that's terrain. Political map mode, this is the basic one, you know, this is one we're going to be in a while, you're all familiar with what this is, basically. Very nice and easy. Trade. This looks a bit different than what it did on the uh, actual screen, and it's going to be very horribly complicated on the um, select screen. So we've still got these particular nations, but now you can see each trade node summarized. So let's have a look at where we are. We're here. So, we've got a fair presence in the Wien trade node, as well as a bit in Venice and a bit in Frankfurt. Now, the key here is to look at these arrows. These dictate the way that trade flows, as it were. It would be really good if we had control of the Antwerpen trade node, because it has nothing going out of it. it just nothing can go out of it. But as it is, we'll probably just have to Yes, and it says here that our main trading port is Wien, which is odd that you call it a port because it's an inland province. But um, that's that's what we're doing there. And that's probably going to be our main node, which is a little weird because we've got ones further down river from it. But we'll just see how that goes. Imperial map mode, we went over this, there's nothing altogether different. We did have, uh, we, we've got a few more explanations on how things work. If there's grey provinces, it means that they're owned by me. Or, you know, if there's green provinces with grey stripes, they're owned by me, but they're not part of the empire. And yellow stripes indicate provinces that are part of the empire, but the country that owns them is not. Religion, we know what that is. Diplomatic, that's going to fuck us over a lot, and I'll show you why. Now, those aren't all the map modes. These are all the map modes here. So we've got an opinion thing here. Sure, okay. Let's just lock that open. Our coalitions. We'll get into those when we start raising them up against us. 
regions. Now these kind of just show you regions. It's fairly straightforward sort of thing. Of a German region, the French region, the Spanish and Iberian region. A lot of that is for particular events and missions and such. Culture. Look at that German culture. Mmm, that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. Sphere of influence is basically shows us our, um, let's see, ch -ch 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 -ch, vassals or things that are in a union with us. We're by ourselves right now. Revolt risk? We've got no revolt risk. Colonial map mode? That would show us colonies and such, I believe. I oh, know. No, it shows us places which. Okay, so here we go. If they're green, the provinces are not colonized that can be colonized by us. Red indicates ones that are too far away. If we mouse over, we can see uh, the effective distance, say, for Trazai here is 601.7, and our range is 160. Fair enough. We also don't have any colonists, so fuck you. Blue indicates the provinces are being colonized, and the darker it gets, the more colonized they are, and grey are just places which already have been taken. Economics. Now what does this indicate for us? Okay, so light green is better. So Tyrol... Tyrol has an income of 76. Ah, okay. This is interesting. We'll get into that in a moment. Just remember that Tyrol is better, whereas you can see some shade differences between, say, Linz, Wien, and Ostmark. Yeah. This indicates. Um, okay, this is a little counterintuitive, to be honest. Light red is not great, dark red is average, yellow is great. This is our manpower that each province is generating. We'll get into that in a moment as well. Technology, it's it's what you expect. You know. Trade value. Okay, so this shows us da -da 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 -da. blue indicates provinces with gold in them, light red is low, dark red is high. Should honestly be the other way around. Yellow is very high. Oh no, sorry. Yellow is high and green is very high. So you can see up here, Novgorod has a massive trade value. That's because it's an important center of trade. Whereas for us, Wien is an important center of trade. It's the middle of the Wien node, and Tyrol is making gold. Which is why it's got such a high production value. Okay, supply limit. This dictates our army sizes in provinces. It goes from... Uh, goes from red to green. It's pretty honest. If you select an army, say like that, those that can support are green, those that cannot are red. Venice cannot support because we have a massive fucking army there for no good reason. Buildings. So dark green indicates more buildings can be built, light green indicates fewer buildings to be built. Okay. What does blue indicate? can't build anything, probably. Alright. That's fine. Missionary map mode, we don't have anything to do with that at the moment. That would show us places that can be converted. Players, if we had, if we're in a multiplayer game, obviously. Accepted cultures, this shows us which cultures in our realm are accepted. So Venice does not have an accepted culture. Winter, so this shows us up here we've got some severe winter. Here we've got some normal winter, and down here we have some... Oh, we've got some severe winter down around the Alps. And some mild winter as well. Good. Climate? <laughs> I know, we're getting pretty into things here. Arctic, temperate, arid, uh, tropical, you know. Sure. Colonial regions, again, we're not up to that point. Trade companies. Yeah, apparently we've got some uh, charters going on. I don't believe they're existing 
yes, those are just regions where trade companies will form. I haven't dealt with trade companies before, so that could be interesting. And trade goods. Now, this is just a really quick display of trade goods, just to show you what you've got. So, in France, which is this area here, we've got a fair amount of grain, a fair amount of iron, uh, some wool, some fabric, is it? Cloth, some fish, and of course, gold. And salt in Salzburg. Oh, and grapes up here. Wine. Very nice. And wine in Ostmark and Rien as well. The ledger has expanded. The main things we care about here are armies in various places. This actually gives us a very accurate count. We are above and beyond what anybody else has. And we're actually under our force limit, which is interesting. It's actually very interesting. You can go over your force limit, but it costs you progressively more and more in terms of upkeep. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, navies, all that sort of thing. Okay, what I'm looking for is trade goods. So this shows you the, the base price of the trade goods, the supply of those trade goods, the demand of those trade goods, and reasons why, and then the current price based on those things. Gold does not have a price because gold just generates money. There is an issue with that, of course. So, let's see, Is does anywhere have higher demand? Yes, so sugar has a base price of 3%, only 70% supply, 49% demand, and uh, this is specifically for demand for me, I believe. No, it could actually be for global demand, and therefore its price is 8.39 gold instead, or ducats, instead of 3. Nice and simple. We're generating grain, which usually is a fairly stable sort of thing. The reason why you generate grain is not to make money. Wine is a little bit more expensive, only a little bit. Uh, we're also doing a little bit of wool, which is, okay, that's great. Uh, cloth is less expensive, fish is less expensive, and salt is, yeah, close enough on average. Iron is very inexpensive at this point in time. That's all right. What's important from this is strategic goods. If you have a particular market share, you get a bonus. See here, some countries already have bonuses. These are what the bonuses are. So, if we look at, say, T, Ming, let's, look at, let's just look at Ming as a case study. So, Ming has a lot of tea and Chinaware, basically being China. So, they're getting minus 10% to their advisor upkeep costs and plus 0.25 yearly legitimacy. That's great. Reason why it's good that we've got grain, even though we've only got 1.7% market share of it at this point in time, is it's a army thing. Grain is good. Wine is good. Wool is good. Uh, I don't particularly care about cloth because I don't use mercs a lot. Uh, fish is pretty good. Fur is great and pretty easy to get if I remember right. Uh, salt and naval supplies, very good. Uh, iron's nice. Ivory's kind of nice if you can get it, but whatever. Uh, coffee's pretty decent. And cocoa is excellent. And that's about all I care about in here for the moment. I mean, obviously there's country and stuff, and we can have a look at our scores and all that sort of business. I believe we're number one. Can I have a look at that somehow? I honestly forget if we can. It's not important, but we're basically the best, because it's what we are. Right, so that's the ledger. There's also the history thing here, which says, The reign of Dightwin saw the provinces of the Mandoy and Champagne gained. During his reign, the provinces of uh, Fruial were lost. But that was back in 1416, so I don't know what it's talking about. Uh, triggered modifiers. If you have a certain number of things, this is basically almost like decision making, a certain number of things, you get a bonus. So, if we own Mecca, we get plus one missionary and plus one yearly prestige. Same thing with Jerusalem, as long as we're Christian or Muslim. If we're excommunicated, we've got problems. And if 
we're not the emperor of HRE. If there are at least 25 members of HRE, and if we're in the HRE, we get this. It's a reason for people to stay in the HRE. Speaking of the HRE, we broke the prince's box. But there's more than that, we honestly just can't really see what's going on there. So, here you can see that we're the Emperor. We get the following bonuses for being Emperor. We get plus uh, 8,800 manpower, plus 88 force limits for land, and plus 8.8 .8 prestige. That's very important, that 8.8 .8 yearly prestige. Because without that, we would be in even more trouble. We'll get into that in a moment. Here's our Imperial Authority. This is our up and down metric based on like what we can do here. It's indicating our control over the HRE. So we get that by honouring calls to arms and winning defensive wars against foreign powers, for member states converting to our religion, for liberating member states, for forcing non-members to release member vassals, if provinces join the empire, if we have successive emperors from the same country, so if we constantly get re-elected. Uh, we lose it by rejecting the calls of members, by provinces leading, leaving the empire, or by other provinces converting to false religions. I believe that member states converting to the true faith is broken in this current uh, version, which is something I haven't mentioned. We're playing version 1.7.3, so take that in mind, this is not current by any means. And uh, every month we get plus 0.8 zero eight just because everybody's at peace inside the empire we got the following bonuses for being the emperor apart from the ones up there see these ones here the manpower force limits and prestige are based on the number of members so that's great these ones here are static so we get plus five percent spy offense we get an additional possible advisor we can have an additional general or admiral and we get plus one diplo relations and we can take the following actions, which we'll get into at some point. Here's the progression track. You have to institute the first one, then the second, and so on and so on. Each one of these costs you a certain amount of imperial authority. So if we wish to call for Reich's reform, from this we get minus 2% building costs, plus 1 yearly prestige, and minus 2% tech cost. Members get minus 2% building and minus 2% tech costs. And we get a Cassus Belli on any non-members who are holding Imperial te uh, territory. Currently, we need 50 Imperial Authority to enact that. We only have 20. 156 of 176 Princes back it. 20 Princes do not. They eventually come round as your Imperial Authority increases, I believe. And from there, you move on to uh, Institute Reich's Regiment, which is we get plus one Diplomat and another Diplo Relation. Everyone else gets minus one Revolt Risk. Reform the Hofgericht. Hof, Hofgericht. Correct. Okay. Uh, so we get plus 0.5 yearly prestige and plus one legitimacy per year. And core creation cost is at minus 10%. That's important. And members get plus 0.1 yearly prestige and plus 0.2 yearly legitimacy. So everyone benefits. Enact Gemina Pfenning. We get plus 15% tax. And members get plus one Diplo relation. Everyone benefits. Ewega Landfried, which is we get plus 10% stability cost modifier. And members get minus 10% stability cost modifier. We don't know what that is at this moment in time, I haven't explained it, but that is negative to us beneficial to members. That also stops internal HRE wars. That's important. Proclaim the Herb Kaisertum. This is the big thing. This is the big thing. This is where everything happens. So uh, the Emperor at this point gets plus 25% Imperial Authority and members get 0.3 yearly legitimacy and the HRE will now always be inherited by the same country. So, we don't have to go through this elector bullshit. Revoke the privilegia. I get minus 3% or minus 3 diplomatic rep. Members get plus 1. And all members of the HRE become vassals of myself. 
or they fuck off out of the Empire and give us a claim to go to war with them to get them back. That's the big thing, that's the thing that we're actually aiming for. That's pretty much our final step. We can go further to Renovatio Imperii, which turns us into one country. Just, that's it. Yeah, great. So here we have our electors, Brittany. Brittany would vote for us should my current ruler die. And there's the breakdown why. And then my closest rival, which is Vasta Gotland, did for them. Georgia, same thing. Jerusalem, same thing. Tigris, same thing. Valencia, yep, same thing. Valencia's rating is a little bit higher, though, and they're actually backing Polotsk after us. Uh, Shalland, who is also backing Polotsk. And Vasta Gotland, who is... They have a strategic interest in voting themselves to be emperor. And then the 176 princes. Down here we have leave HRE, we can't leave it because we're the emperor. Dismantle it, which we can't dismantle it because we're the current emperor. That's for other people to do if they start conquering our lands and stuff. And the close button, which you could barely fucking see. The other thing here is the Pope. The Pope's still around. Uh, Alenia is the current papal controller. So this place over here, okay, great. And they're papal controller because they have two cardinals for some reason. We have one cardinal, Patricia. And nobody in the uh, in the backing here. We only okay. So how this works is we spend papal influence, um, and we spend that on cardinals. To, it's basically like bribing them, and they become your man, and then you put them in, and you know. If you are in control of the pa of the um, thing, you get the following modifiers. You can see those. It's pretty good, and if you have a controller, you get more papal influence per year. Therefore. It's easier to keep, you know, keep control of the thing. You can also call crusades and excommunicate people. Yeah, so no longer can we do that. We'll try and get that back, but, uh, you know. We also are currently gaining 16.35 per year, and you can store up to five years' worth of papal influence. And there's the breakdown of why. So, the Pope's opinion of us, we're at peace, we control a cardinal, we've got a prestige value, religious unity, and 8.7 base tax and buildings. Right, so let's get rid of the map modes. And go into the, the basic thing. Here's, an out, here's the outliner, so that's great. We can configure it to put different things in there, that's fine. Currently it's showing us our diplomats, our merchants, our armies, and our navies. So we've got Dodon Bogomil, he will never die, and Heraclios Stefan, he will never die, and two merchants, Abon Dio Felicia and Albrecht Pelagius. Two armies, the first army, which is just a thousand guys, and the second army, which is 125,000 guys, and they are so, so oversupply. I don't even know why they're there. Anyway, we're going to actually deal with this right now, so we're going to hit this button to split them in half, and send them up there, hit that button to split them in half, and send them there, and just split these guys in half again, and split, send one of those armies there, and that, where's the supply limit going to? Can we even see that? Ah, there it is, right here. So that's still not going to be enough in some cases. So we'll play that by ear. Okay, and that's all fine. We've got navies, we've got some light ships and transports. And heavy ships. No, light ships, and over here we actually have galleys and transports. So, there are four different types of ships, and naval battles are now a thing. Heavy ships are, you know, great great in the ocean and outside of closed-in waters. Galleys rule the inland seas, such as the Med. Lightships are for trade, transports are for transporting. We'll deal with that in a moment. We've got our date, we've got our current uh, places, our rank, all that sort of thing, our game speed, 
you know how it is. We've got the game paused at the moment, of course. Okay, we've got one available missionary. We've got two available diplomats, zero colonists, and we've got two merchants, but they're both doing things. We've got legitimacy right here, so we obviously get legitimacy from prestige and controlled cardinals, and those are the effects right there of our legitimacy. So, and here's what's going to fuck us. We currently have 97.01 prestige. Every year we lose 35.65 of that. The modifiers are as follows. Because of the states in the HRE, we get plus 8.8. .8. Because we control a cardinal, we get plus 1. Because we have uncontested cores, we get minus 39.7. And that's because, if you remember, of this. Every single province here that is not part of France is, is a negative for us. And of course there's the decay because prestige tries to zero at zero. So, you know, it, it decays at a rate dependent. Minus 5% per year, basically. So that influences our trade power, the morale of our armies and navies, the cost of mercenaries, our spy defense, papal influence, legitimacy, how well we improve relations, and the impact of us attacking people and taking their land, which is aggressive expansion. That's going to flatline and dust that's going to fuck us up. Here's stability. Stability has some, some effects that we'll get into when we actually get into them. Here's manpower. Currently have 78,637 dudes just waiting to be hired. Uh, we gain 1,067 of that per month, and we have a maximum of 127,000. And there's the reasons why. Here's our money. We've currently got 43, almost 44,000 bucks or ducats, and we are losing minus 1.09 per month. And there's our reasons why. Here's our breakdowns. Government, we're an empire. Being an empire gives us extra army morale and extra income from vassals, which we don't have. Here's our culture groups, so German is our primary culture that's great that's really good this would be how to change government but we can't manually change from an empire here's kaiser daitwin and everybody else who's in you know the same dynasty his stuff he doesn't have illegal hair we don't have any cultural modifiers at this point in time uh advisors so what we do here is come up here and purchase advisors and they have a particular cost at a particular monthly cost. Advisors give us extra diplomatic points as well as a modifier. So if we were just losing out on prestige we may hire the philosopher here to give us plus point one or plus one but eh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can do here to try and help out and you know there's one for navy, one for military and one for administration. Here's our Monarch Point gains and how many Monarch Points we have. These numbers match up here, of course, and the same things can happen. So, we'll actually yeah, go into it off here. So, administrative power, we get six a month. That's because base value of three, and Dytwin has three points in it. We can get 999 points saved up before we got to spend some. Okay, diplomatic power, same sort of thing, except that also tells us how many diplomatic relations we can maintain. We can maintain seven. And military power, which indicates to us how many military leaders we can maintain without uh, taking penalties. The penalties is reduced military point gain per month. So we can have three of those, which is good. We can also set a national focus. What a national focus does is plus two in that particular focus, but minus one in the other two. So basically minus one from everything and shoving it all into one. Um, we're currently gaining a fairly good rate, so we'll just have to see how that impacts us in the future. We may change it up. Diplomacy. So that's showing us our country now. Ah, so we can see our personality is human. Uh, we're part of HRE. We're tech group Western. We've got one culture in our primary cultures group, our spy stuff, oh, we've got no active policies, 
see how many diplomatic relations we've got, our diplomatic reputation, how good we are at improving relations. We've got no legal heir. We've got no possible rivals, but we have reconquest Cassis Belli on a fuck ton of places. Stability zero, technologies, prestige, the number of ideas that we have taken. And then we can have a look at our relations with other nations, which is good. And we can create vassals from what we currently have, so we could release Augsburg and make it a vassal. We're not doing that. Economy. You can see here we're currently suffering from inflation. We'll get to that in a moment. So income, expenses, nice and simple. We can toggle uh, or we can slide our colonial maintenance, missionaries maintenance. We're not currently charging anything from that. Army maintenance or fleet maintenance. If you do those, it decreases the morale. Uh, not caring about that. We can take out a loan. No. Okay, so we've got inflation just because of gold because a certain percentage of our income is based on gold and so that would normally be increasing inflation at a rate of 0.1 per year but instead it's at 0 0.05 because we're a player I wouldn't mind knowing exactly the percentage of gold that we can tolerate because there is a percentage that you can tolerate but you know whatever uh, inflation just increases the cost of everything. You can reduce it, of course, but only when it gets to two or higher. And of course, if we reduce our gain to below 0 0.05, we'll naturally reduce it. Trade. We've got no income from trade at this point in time, and here are a bunch of stats about trade. This is how efficient we are at trading. This is our range for trading. That's how far away we can deploy merchants. This is how good we are at steering trading towards our nodes. This is a modifier on our trade income. This is mercantilism, which increases our trade power. This is something to do with privateers, which I haven't dealt with before. And this is the bonus we get for inland trade nodes. Don't worry about it too much. Just here's the description of the trade nodes that we can go to. It's all good. That's great. Technology. We're in a Western trade group. We're at free tech and everything. We need 592 to advance technology. So if those universities haven't kicked in. I don't know if they will at some point or you know if they're just going to not do that for some reason. We'll see. We'll see. And of course, each technology gives you additional things. For example, we've currently got administrative tech free, which is medieval admin. By going to Tech 4, we'd go to National Ideas, which would let us pick an idea group, which we'll get to next. Uh, same thing here, going to Diplo 4 would give us docks, marketplaces, and increase our trade range. Going to Military 4, Pike Square, would give us armories, a tactics increase, and morale increase. Ah, it's all tons of things to do. And over here, you can see some of the things that the particular techs influence. So diplomatic tech influences your ships, Military tech influences your dudes. And here's a list of what levels things become available. So we can increase our maneuver, military tactics, combat width. All of this stuff is a lot of, lot to take in. And we'll just, honestly, we'll just play it as a lot of it goes. And see how we go with it. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff to take in. Ideas. So here you can see that we've got our French traditions. And when we get all of our French tradition or ideas, we'll get that additional one over here. And here are all of the ones that we went over in the intermission. And you'll see we unlock three and we get the next one. And that's just a progress bar there. We can't unlock this now because we need admin tech four and we only have three, but we can see what we can get. Here are all of the ideas. Now. If Okay, this has changed a little bit from the last time that I've seen it, and it's actually too big for our screen, which is annoying. But basically each one of these gives you a particular, you know, modifier. We're not taking espionage by the way, because I hate espionage so much. But we take say um economic ideas, and that would give us the first one we take, uh, additional tax, 
then less build cost. Uh, we get yearly inflation reduction. We get less interest on loans, more advisors possible, less land maintenance, and more production efficiency. Little things like that. We will probably be going innovative fairly quickly. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so if we just mouse over this really quickly without doing anything, you can see it's going to be annoying because it expands really quickly as well. But if we mouse over this really quickly, you can see that when we fully unlock the entire list, we get a bonus. And for innovative ideas, it reduces the cost, so the initial cost and the hiring upkeep cost for advisors by 25%. And some of them give you like permanent cast spell eyes and things like that. Okay, this is a bit better. And also you can see here that if we unlock another idea group, it will give us access to a policy, which will give us additional bonuses. Alright, let's get rid of that. Missions and decisions. So missions, these give us objectives. So, it always gives you three or less. So the first one that we have here, we get to pick these, and then it's kind of giving us an objective that we just focus on. So, the options it's given us are to form an alliance with Shaland. So, that will be complete when Shaland is allied with us. And that will give us 10 prestige and 25 diplomatic power. We could reclaim at Welsh Brixen, which, it, well, the mission condition is if we own it and that gives us 10 prestige. Or we could improve relations with the Elector of Shaland, which means we need to boost him up to at least 100 points, and that will give us 1 stability and 5 Imperial Authority. That's the best one there. So before we click on that though, let's see if we can do it. So Shaland is currently at plus 12 to us, because they have the same religion, they have the same dynasty, we've got a bit of border friction, and they want some of our provinces. We can boost that up. First of all, we could offer an alliance. They would totally accept it. So, what we do, we'll just do this while we're at it. Let's say, form the alliance. So we need to form an alliance, an alliance of Shaland will be more beneficial to us. We'll just come here to Shaland and say, buddy, I'd like to offer you an alliance they would accept. You can see the modifiers there. And you can see here our diplomat is now unavailable for seven days while he goes over there and back. Well, seven days for him to get there. So that's changed from uh, last time that I've played this. Last time, diplomatic actions happened immediately, and then it took them time to come back. It looks like they've uh, modified that slightly. So while we wait for that in pause, Let's go over some other things. So policies, we've got none that we can add. National decisions. Some of these are interesting. So we can enact, we can declare the statute in restraint of appeals if the Pope hates us. And what that does is it gives us some prestige, gives Catholicism some reform desire, makes people dislike us a fair bit, and gives us less revolt risk and some other stuff. Uh, Leotard Sastemoy which is a French thing, I believe. We need to have Administrative Tech 13. The ruler needs to have Admin 5 at least, and we need at least 100 points in monthly income. That gives us prestige, changes us to an absolute monarchy, and gives us some effects for 20 years. And uh, these go on a bit. Some of them are fairly simple and ones you should always do. Some of them are not. Little things like that. So, you know, like, if we've got a theologian then, and we need to convert some places, then we'd, we'd take the Advancement of Religion Act. And we'd obviously, if we can, take an Act of Uniformity, because there's no negative on that. Stability and Expansion. So currently, we have War Exhaustion as a, as a metric here. War Exhaustion occurs if you're at war for too long. People don't like it. We've got some bonuses to that because we're a player and because we're at peace, so that's fine. Stability we can't boost yet, but here you can see the bonuses that we would get and the problems that we would get. That goes from minus three to plus three. And uh, yeah, so cool. Expansion, which shows us some colonial stuff. So our colonial range, a colonial settler increase, and 
administrative efficiency, which is an overextension thing. And here's overextension. If we take provinces that are not cores, we suffer overextension. And overextension increases rebellion risk. And here's our rebellion stuff. So currently we have a minus 5% revolt risk. That's great. That's good. Religion. 100% religious unity. That's great. Uh, we're Catholic. We can't convert out of Catholic. Oh, we've got no places to convert. Sorry. Um, okay, these are our little percentage points here. So Catholic... The excuse me, the modifiers that Catholicism gives us is we get plus one tolerance of the true faith, so that's this, that reduces revolt risk in various Catholic provinces, minus one tolerance of heretics. So heretics are Christian religions that are not, um, you know, Catholic. And then we've got heathens, of course. So those are, would be, if we had provinces which identified as one of those two, they would you know, not like that. It would be a revolt risk. This is our papal influence. This is the reform desire of the Catholic Church. Okay, that, that would open up the papacy view. That shows as Elenia is the papal controller. And here we can select Defender of the Faith. This costs 500 gold. And after two years, countries with more prestige than us can claim the title. And we lose it if the ruler dies, or if we decline a call of war, call to war if somebody gets attacked by infidels, and we don't join up. That gives us plus one missionary, plus five percent morale in both things, less war exhaustion, more prestige, more papal influence, and increased tech cost. We're not going to select it. And here's some military stuff. Here we could select our preferred unit type. Uh, currently we're at Halberd Infantry, which is absolutely fine by me and chevauchees, which is again absolutely fine by me. Uh, the things here, the pips just show us their abilities in particular things. Ships, some stats, so we've got some army tradition, morale, force limit, blah 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 blah. Here's where we hire our leaders. Each leader to would hire, no, each leader that we hire costs us initial outlay unless we make our ruler a general. We're not going to hire any leaders at this point in time. Okay. So, let's see. Oh yes, this stuff. So we've got, these are alerts up here. We've got free advisor slots that are free. You know, nice and easy. We've got some disputed succession over various countries. So, uh, we could claim throne of these various places. No, because we need to have more prestige of invader. We we don't. And we would also need the same ruling dynasty. Hmm. Oh, whatever. Uh, this lets us know we can become defender of a faith, and this lets us know that we can hire free upkeep military leaders. Nice and easy. So let's look at what we need to do. We need to conquer some places. The Alliance of Shelland, that it's basically making us do, has put a little bit of a crimp on our plans. But we should still be able to... Okay, so we do have fairly low supply limits in these countries, but they will be manageable. So we have un... Let's pump the speed up a little bit and unpause the game. Shalland accepted the uh, alliance, so now it's going to take our diplomat six days to get back, and we have gained 10 prestige and 25 diplomatic power. Valencia has also offered us an alliance. We're going to accept that. So you can see here two of seven of our diplomatic relations are filled, and we've just got an alert that we uh, have no mission selected. So we can improve relations with the Elector of Tigris, which would give us one stability and five imperial authority. Still reclaims Welsh Brixen. I don't even know where that is. So let's find province. Ah, it's this one in here. What do they make? They make cloth. And they belong to Auvergne. 
which is also over here. And they're allied with Upper Burgundy. Okay. Sure. We've got a lot of stuff here, so we're getting a lot of just things. A bunch of people are... If you right click it just dismisses these. Everybody is entering into alliances. And that's just going to happen. So what I'm going to do is filter filter messages like that. So I just want messages about me. And the other mission that we have here is to improve relations with Auvergne, which would give us free prestige. No. So let's have a look at Tigris. So Tigris currently have, well, they're only just voting for us as next emperor. Valencia is right up there, and I believe Shalland will be up there as well. Yep, good. So we need to improve relations with Tigris. Well, we, we already need to improve relations with them, we know that, so let's select that as the mission. Thank you. And then we'll come down here and diplomatically select them. Let's have a royal marriage. So this will decrease our legitimacy by two points, but that's fine. Because it also increases your legitimacy over time, and we get an increased chance of an heir. Ah, let's have a look at trade. So, we've got a guy collecting a trade in Wien. That's important. We also have a guy collecting trade in Venice. That's cool. You can see here we've got 20% of trade power in Wien. So this is us here. And we've got 17% down here. What we could try to do is transfer trade from like a place upriver from um, Wien, but I think we might just be better off just because of the amount of gold we're getting from Venice, just keeping that there. Okay, that sounds good to me. And let's... Yeah, we're going to hire an advisor or two just because we can. So, administrative advisor? Ah! Master of the Mint. He only gives us plus one. Also, we can't fire him at the moment, not for another month. But he reduces our inflation reduction, so currently we're, you know, not taking any inflation. Uh, we don't really need diplomatic, but I wouldn't mind a military guy. Land maintenance, actually. So you see, even though these two advisors, one's costing us, they're each costing us one Ducat per month, we've now got a monthly balance of minus 0 0.08. And that's just because this guy's reduced our land maintenance. And I'm going to focus on... Do I want to focus... Let's see what our diplomatic advisors are like. Ah, oh, trade efficiency. Hmm. Or better relations over time. Go better relations over time. There we go. So that's now giving us 10 diplomatic power per month. It's crazy. So one thing we can do with our diplomatic power would be to convert the culture of Venezia to German, but it would cost us 250 diplomatic power. Yeah, and it looks like none of these places actually kept the uh, university. So that might just be something that happens when we mega convert. Okay, we entered a royal marriage with Tigris, that's great. But that is not enough. We need 100 diplomatic relations. They are now definitely voting for us. But what we need to do here is... Well, we've got no diplomats to send, so we're just going to have to wait for three days. Okay, here we go. So the nation of Wallachia 
is requesting that we come to their aid in the Anatolian succession war against Crete. They are part of the Empire, and we are the Emperor. We're going to accept that. And it says here, Crete has declared war upon their new enemy, Wallachia. They cite succession war as their Cassus Belli. So, let's see. Apparently, I mean not demand peace. Okay. So, Crete is just this little place down here. I don't think we're going to have issues with that. And up here you can see that it's told us that we're at war. We've also suffered some casualties, which will, you know, influence on our monetary abilities. And we've only done that because, well... Because they're fucking idiots, to be quite honest, and they all started in Venezia. Anyway, we've got some light ships here, and we're going to send them to do exactly what light ships should do. That is to protect protect trade in Venice. And that gives us additional trade power in Venice. It should, anyway, when they get there. Right, so we're just hoping these guys move out. Okay, diplomat's home from Shalland, so we're going to send him over to Tigris. Okay, we can't actually send one to them for another month because of how it works. That's fine. Just had an alliance offer from Tigris, so that's what we wanted anyway. So that saved us a bit, and we're at 85. So we're still not at 100. Oh, and here are some Emperor actions. Nice. Hmm. So what we'll be doing here is just sending somebody there to... Where is it? To improve relation. I have an alliance offer from the Pope. Now, the Pope isn't actually part of the... H oh. Okay, he is part of the HRE. But I don't believe we've got any cause on his stuff, so the Pope's a good guy to be an ally to. Additionally, it will improve his opinion of us, and therefore everything else. Hopefully. You never know. So I'm a little impressed that Crete decided to declare war on somebody, I mean, really? Okay, these guys are currently having a bit of an issue with supply as well, so let's split them. Send them both up north. Yeah, maybe not via the same damned route, though. So again, we hold down shift to move the armies without, you know, moving the armies. Okay, let's see, you are also having issues. Whoops. So that's how to create a new unit without just splitting in half. Come on, guys. Thank you. Okay, our dude's home from Tigris, and we can probably send him out again. Yep, so we just sent him to improve relations. He will sit there until that improved relations tracker gets to 100. Not, not the total opinion, but the other one, the like, bonus that you get from improved relations. And that's good. It helps us out a fair bit. Okay, so we need to go to war with somebody fairly quickly. We're allied with Valencia, Shalland, and the Pope. We're already at war with Crete because of Wallachia. But we need to go to war with, say, Vastagotland or Brittany. I'm thinking Brittany, but they're allied with Ferreira, Flanders, and Luxembourg, and Vastagotland is allied with Brandenburg and Jamtland. So Brandenburg is there, and Jamtland is up here somewhere, I think. There. So, that wouldn't be so bad. Just have a look at things. So, let's give us our supply map mode. Okay. So, this is interesting. We've got, like, a band around here that we may have trouble getting through. Well, some of them have more trouble than others. 
Well, that's actually very interesting. Neat. All right. Well, we've got a plan then. You guys head up to there. You head up to there. And you guys can just chill. Royal marriage offer from Patel. And also one from Bohemia. I'm fine with that. The one thing we don't want to do is have... Okay, so now we need to be careful. We're at six of seven diplomatic relations. And we want to save them for important places. Okay, such as, uh, well, we need to keep, I believe, four of these guys online to always get what we need. So there's Georgia, there's Tigris, Valencia, and um, Shalland. Shalland's actually fairly close to not doing it. Are we, do we have a... Okay, so let's have a royal marriage with Shalland. It only dictates which countries. You can have as many royal marriages and alliances as you want, as long as they're only with, you know, X number of countries. Okay, Diplomat has returned from Shalland. We must have hit winter again, because these guys are now taking attrition. So I'm going to split them. And move these guys out a little bit as well. And hopefully that didn't destroy anything, but my microphone just cut out. So yes, we just got a royal marriage with Valencia. I'm going to merge these two units. Now, this is important. And it's one of the most bizarre things, but if you come down here, you can see we've got combat width of 5. Right there, combat width 5. It may also display it here. It does not. But okay, so combat width of 5. So only 5 of these 17 regiments will be on the front line. There are two lines. That's fine at the moment. It's fine at the moment because we don't need to worry about artillery. But when artillery comes into the game, it's going to be an issue. But at this point, we're fine because everybody has that and, you know, whatever. Speaking of, I think I know what I'm going to put my focus into. We just put it into military. Now, we can't change that until... Uh, 1470, so hopefully it works out for us. Okay. And we're going to move these guys out of Valencia because we'll fuck that. Not Valencia, uh, Venezia. Split them in half, move one of them over. Okay, so let's have a look at Vasta Gotland in terms of its military. Wow. So they have 6,000 dudes. Uh, their allies were Brandenburg. Who have 10,000 dudes. And uh, Jamtland, I believe. Who have 3,000 dudes. Okay. Okay. So now we have a look at why we can declare war. And we've got cores. Those are our Cassus Bellies. We can try and call in our allies. None of them will actually come in. It's fine. So we don't call them. Um, but yes, the type of Cassus Belli... We no longer need a Cassus Belli to declare war. But when you pick one, it gives you some bonuses depending on what you end up doing. So it's a little bit different from Crusader Kings in that regard. So we would probably go for trying to take... Um, well, honestly, it doesn't matter which core we select as our goal, except that that is now our war goal and probably gives us a ticking war score. So we would probably say, yeah, let's just say take core Plock here, or Wisner, or Warshaw. And just be like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. We're not going to do that this episode, though, because we're about to end the episode. But that's basically how we would go about doing that.
let's just before we end the episode, let's try and finish up this uh, improved relation thing. I'm actually really happy with how the uh, money situation is. It's really good. Uh, you guys go up to whatever that place is called. You guys go there. Good. I'm not going to worry about those ships at the moment. So I've just noticed something new. The go home at war button. This is important because previously when you went to war and you had all your trade fleets running around, they'd just get ravaged and it was stupid. It just didn't make any sense. Okay. So that will presumably let them automatically go home. I'm going to invest five points in a Pope or a Cardinal. Um, none of these guys are against us in any way. None of them seem to have a bunch of dudes up here. None of them are Elenia. So... We just select the youngest one who isn't already backed by Holstein. Which would probably be Hartman. So you can see here, we're now controlling this guy. And we can say... You know, we can put automatic spending on, so it automatically keeps us in control of him. But I'm not too worried about that at this point in time. Units have suffered some casualties, it's fine. You can see here that our list of countries has gotten two greens in it. That means that if we had more prestige than them, which we don't, that we could press our claim on them and, you know, fuck around like that. Wow, my headphones are really being shit today. The ruler of Mazea down here has died without leaving a direct heir. They will join in the union with Kavuna unless we put a stop to it. Um, and by putting a stop to it, we'll be going to war. No, back down. Those two places are so unimportant. And now they're in a personal union with this place here. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. It just does not matter. One more tick of this and we should be able to get our uh, mission complete. Hello. Brabant has declared war on Cybertot. Okay. The nation of Cybertot, my faithful ally. Really? Meh. Yeah. Is requesting that you come to their aid in the Clonian succession war against Brabant, be a part of the Empire, and you know, etc., etc. So is Brabant, though. The Allied have got. I'm going to decline that. That has not cost us Imperial authority because it's part of the Empire still. So we're fine. However, at the moment, our succession is somewhat in doubt. for reasons. So basically we're going to go and dump a diplomat on the Pope. No, on Georgia. Are we allied with Georgia? No. Okay, they've already got a great power ally. Are we allied with Jerusalem? No. Well, I know we're allied with Tigris. We're allied with Valencia and we're allied with Shalland. Do we have royal marriages with all of these places? Yes, we do. Wonderful. Mm. Well, I guess I'll just send a guy to improve relations in Georgia. We do need a diplomat to declare war, so that's one reason why we're waiting on our guy in Tigris to finish doing his job. Come on. There we go. Ah, oh, one more point. Come on. Go on overtime, man. Come on. Franconia declared war on Vested Land. Right. Oh, and here's something I didn't check on. This is our uh, production interface. It's got a bunch of stuff that we could, you know, do. If we had any cores that we could make, missionaries, buildings to build naval units and other sort of stuff. We can still buy more military, but we've got no need to do so at this point in time. 
so we won't. And this month should be our mission. There you go, one stability and five imperial authority. So our stability has increased. And now we have a mission. Uh, improve relations with Auvergne, that would get us some prestige, reclaim that place, or royal marriage of Slavonia, which is five prestige and 25 diplomatic power. The hell is Slavonia? Oh, right there. They're really not that important. Okay, well, we'll deal with that next time we come around. So, for the meantime, that'll be the end of the episode. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. I promise we'll have more gameplay next episode. And, uh, yeah. I've been Sub. You've been yourselves. Later.